Let me tell you the story of Paul Heinrich Eisenstein of Leipzig. I found out about him from something called the Stumblestone. You can look at the uh, description for a link. We were staying in this neighborhood really nice. In fact, that's the Schumann house. That's where Robert and Clara Schumann lived uh, when they were in Leipzig. And it's now a museum and concert venue. So it's a nice neighborhood. We weren't in digs that were this fancy, but every time I'd walk down the street, I'd bump trip over this thing. I thought it was a D mark, that something that marked a pipe or something, or Nope, it was something that says Paul Heinrich Eisenstein, born 1881, escaped into death, committed suicide in 1943. So I wanted to find out something about him. He lived right here. There was a house on this empty lot. It's a now kind of a playground for school. And I found out uh, where he worked and what he did. He'd drive down this street, uh, to this pool every morning, winter or summer, and he'd have a swim. It's still there. Uh, and then he'd go to work. And let me show you uh, his workplace, his digs, you know, his work digs. So it was in downtown Leipzig. This is the center of Leipzig. This is the marketplace, the market plots, the market plaza. Some of these buildings are new, some of them are old. Uh, a lot of buildings were destroyed during bombings, and he worked here at the Commerce Bank um, that has, I'm, I'm going to say, the gaudiest uh, decorations of any building I've seen in uh, Leipzig. I, I'm going to throw some uh, stills in here so we can get some a close view of some of these, there's that stuffed gold at the, at the very top and, uh, you know, along the walls, there's just gaudy. I mean, is that enough gold? We get the message, bank, a lot of stuff in there. And it's uh, right across the street from uh, Thomas Church where Johann Sebastian Bach was Kapellmeister hundreds of years before. Uh, and uh, getting back to Paul, in 1935, he lost his job because of the Nuremberg Laws. I, I forgot to tell you, Paul was a Jew. So in 1935, there was a law saying you couldn't employ Jews for practically anything, certainly not work in a bank. Um, and I'd walk past this uh, what I found out later was a memorial. I thought it was a art installation. It has that very clean, modern look of uh, some kind of modern work of art. But actually, what it is, is a memorial. There used to be a synagogue here, a Jewish church, right? Synagogue. And in 1938, on Kristallnacht, throughout Germany and also here in Leipzig as well. Uh, synagogues, businesses were demolished. Um, and this memorial put up uh, later um, to, as a memorial to the thousands of Jews that were rounded up and put in concentration camps and killed. Our guy Paul was taken away on Kristallnacht to uh, Buchenwald concentration camp, uh, he was released. He was a hotshot, so he might have pulled strings or something. He was released on the condition that uh, he did not tell anybody what was going on there, and he had to give up his Iron Cross that he was awarded for uh, service in the German military in World War I. There's a plaque here commemorating uh, the synagogue uh, and remembrance of the uh, murdered uh, Jews of Leipzig, of which there were thousands. In many languages, it's written here. And um, on the, on the, uh, in front of the memorial, there's a Stella stone, I guess, uh, with a plaque that says, uh, here on November 1938, the great synagogue 
of the Jewish community of Leipzig was destroyed by arson of fascist hordes. Do not forget. And uh, there's a lot of trouble in the world right at the moment. I'm not going to make a political point or a religious point. I'm going to leave you here with your own contemplations and your own counsel. Just wanted to put Paul's story up. Okay, talk to you later.